Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So today we're taking a look at the base model, M2 MacBook Air. Yes, that one. And I've been using it for quite some time now and I do wanna talk about my experience with it as a MacBook Pro 14 user, a content creator, and all around regular human being. And honestly, I had a hard time coming up with things to say about it because it's a MacBook, it works, it looks great. You know, ever since the release of the now legendary M1 chip, MacBooks have kind of become the more or less go-to recommendation for productivity laptops as well as laptops for creative work. But now we're entering a new era of Apple Silicon, the M2 lineup, and a lot of people have a lot to say about the cheapest one you can get. So yeah, so do I, so do I. So. Yeah, before we get to me defending this base model, let's talk about the actual device itself first. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna be talking about is that brand new design. Now, this isn't anything crazy because this is pretty much identical to the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 with that notch and much more flat boxy design. It doesn't have that wedge design where it kind of tapers and gets thinner. You get that full size row of function keys and that much bigger fingerprint reader. Now the biggest difference here would probably be the keyboard because it doesn't have that black on black style. Instead you get black keys and the color of the chassis. Now because this is the Air, it is much thinner and lighter. About half as thin as the MacBook Pro 14, which is a laptop that I once thought was super lightweight and portable. But now after actually carrying this around and bringing it to places, the MacBook Pro 14 kind of seems a little heavy now and clunky. As for the port situation, you do get MagSafe charging, which is great. You get two USB-C ports on the left side and on the right side, you get a headphone jack. For the display, you get that tried and true liquid retina display with a resolution of 2560 by 1664. Now, it may not be as good as the XDR mini LED display that you can find on the MacBook Pro 14 and 16, and this doesn't get ProMotion either, but this is still a great looking panel. Fight me if you think otherwise. But this still gets a spec bump because it now goes up to 500 nits of brightness compared to the 400 nits on the M1 MacBook Air. You also get a slightly bigger display with that notch because it is now at 13.6 inches compared to the 13.3 inch display on previous models. For the speakers, you still get fantastic sounding speakers. Apple has always been known to have the best speakers in the world of portable computers, and the M2 MacBook Air still holds true to that. And for the keyboard and trackpad, both are great. The typing experience is pretty much identical to the MacBook Pro 14, and this big trackpad is the one we all know and love from Apple. So yes, overall experience for both keyboard and trackpad is fantastic. And now that we're done talking about the more external aspects of the MacBook Air, let's, let's talk about the more controversial issues surrounding it. Now this is commended to be a great MacBook, but if and only if you don't get the base model. Apparently it's only good if you get the more expensive configuration with the upgraded GPU, 512 gigabytes of storage, and still only eight gigabytes of unified memory. But that starts at 1499, which is a lot of money. Like that's no joke. The base configuration, however, starts at 1199 with the Bind M2 chip, 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of unified memory. But honestly, 1199 is still kind of a stretch. So yeah, but if you want the brand new design, this is the most affordable one you can get. But the question is, why don't people recommend this base model? Like, what's wrong with it, right? 
Well, the biggest controversy surrounding it would be the singular SSD chip. So it's found to be significantly slower even compared to the M1 MacBook Air that used two chips for its base model 256 gigabyte configuration. But what does that even mean, right? Does that mean that this thing is a hot pile of garbage? Well, according to most reviews online, it means that it significantly slows down the laptop when you're doing more intensive tasks like video editing and photo editing, like when you're exporting tons of photos. Basically, it's holding back that brand new shiny M2 chip. So the recommendation is to upgrade to the more expensive configuration that I mentioned earlier or upgrade the SSD from 256 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes, which is a whopping $200. So that automatically bumps it up to 1400. I feel like a lot of people reviewing the M2 MacBook Air have forgotten the target market for it. I see so many people trying to overwhelm the base model and when it doesn't hold up, call it a terrible, laptop. The MacBook Air was never made for creative professionals with very intensive workloads. That's why they have the MacBook Pro lineup, right? Instead, it was made for the student and for people who work mostly on their laptops or maybe the hobbyist that likes to dabble in video and photo editing, but nothing too intensive, right? Not to mention the price. Not everybody has a $1,400 budget for their everyday computers. And this is just US pricing. We have to take other countries that sell Apple products at a significantly higher price into consideration. And a good example of that would be the Philippines. So if you wanted the base model, you'd have to pay $69,990, which is roughly $1,300. And if you wanted to upgrade the SSD from 256 gigabytes to 512, you'd be paying 81,990, which is about $1,550, which is, it's a lot of money. And in my time of using this, this has done everything I needed to do from web browsing, media consumption, emails, script writing, all the basic productivity tasks that the average human would need to accomplish. But I am also somebody who shoots and edits video for YouTube, right? And I've edited 4K videos on this. I actually have an entire video where I edit a video on the M2 MacBook Air and I even borrowed a camera so I could use like more prosumer codecs like H.265, 10-bit, 400 megabit videos, you know, and it handled it like it was able to do the job it wasn't perfect and i talk more about that in depth in that video but yeah this is still a very very capable video editing machine and i'm pretty sure it will do the same for photos so in terms of performance the macbook air base model will be able to check every box you need in terms of productivity and it can do some light to moderate creative work. So basically you can do everything that you needed to do and then some, even with just that singular 256 gigabyte SSD chip and eight gigabytes of unified memory. But obviously this is not a perfect computer. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? I do acknowledge some of the setbacks you get with that singular SSD um, chip, but at the end of the day, those are kind of small compromises to the amount of power you're going to get in this as well. Like, you're going to have to wait a little longer when you transfer files, like five minutes, maybe 10 minutes back. So it's going to take a little longer for you to export a video. You only have 256 of onboard storage. You only get eight gigabytes of unified memory. Some of those have fixes, right? Like editing off of an external SSD. Like that's what I do all the time and it works great. Also cloud storage is a thing, but even though everything I said doesn't sound great, again, if you're on a strict budget, these little compromises, like waiting a little longer to transfer files, they're not going to matter all that much when you get to save couple hundred dollars because of it you know what i mean like people who are on very strict budgets you're still getting a great laptop but yeah to end this video this base model m2 macbook air is still a fantastic laptop for the student and hobbyist videographer and photographer on a budget 
So that is pretty much that for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions about the MacBook, please leave a comment down below and I will try my best to get back to you. But yeah, that is pretty much that for this video and I'll see you in the next one.